We're moving up the coast now from Cork for our next minister, a, a, a minister who hails from the proud maritime county of Roscommon. <laughs> now, Minister, my mother is from Roscommon, so I, I love it, and I, 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 I say that with great admiration. Um, but also the minister will know that the National Research Fleet is also operated by a man from a proud maritime county of Roscommon. So um, you're in good company here. And I know you're going to get a chance to visit the ships this morning. So now that everybody, I think, is seated, it is my great pleasure to introduce Minister Dennis Nocton. Thanks very much, uh, Peter. Um, President, uh, Minister Creed, uh, Minister Kine, uh, Chair of the Oireachtas Committee, Deputy Hildegard Nocton. Uh, I'm delighted to be here this morning, and I'm not from a proud maritime county. Uh, however, last December, with the severe rainfall that we had, it felt like being from a very proud maritime uh, county, or not so proud. Uh, so I suppose uh, it was quite appropriate to be appointed uh, as the Minister for, for Climate Change. Uh, but uh, look, I'm delighted to be here this morning uh, in Galway to participate here uh, in the third annual conference on harnessing our ocean wealth. I'm fortunate uh, that we have so many uh, people committed to the uh, ocean sector here uh, with us this morning to develop the full potential uh, of, we, of what we have uh, off our coast. Uh, and I think you know, the theme of this year's conference, uh, Innovating for Our Marine Future, uh, I think. Um, is uh, fully complements the objectives that we have in trying to uh, develop our, our offshore renewable energy sector. Uh, and as you know, uh, last December the government published uh, the Energy White Paper, uh, the white paper entitled uh, Ireland's Transition to a Low Carbon Energy Future defines the government's vision uh, for the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions from the energy sector by up to 95% relative to 1990 levels within the next 400 months. Uh, the White Paper covers the first 160 uh, of those months up to uh, 2030, and that will set, uh, uh, be set as a very important milestone for Ireland's transition to a low-carbon uh, energy future, and represents the first time that an Irish government uh, has pointed the way to the eventual elimination of fossil fuels uh, from our energy system. As Ireland's very first uh, Climate Action Minister, I have to try and deliver on a hugely ambitious vision uh, for our energy system, uh, which certainly requires uh, innovation. But it can also only happen with active collaboration and engagement with Irish citizens, communities, businesses and local and national state agencies. Uh, and I think no matter how ambitious our goals are, we cannot deliver on those unless we actually bring people with us. So innovation is not just about solutions to existing and upcoming problems, but innovative thinking and how we can bring people with us. We need to start with the basic principles of what do people want and how we can build the climate agenda around these wants. Only by bringing people with us, not just uh, with the scientific, not just with the policy, but with the practical pathways that we can have people at the very centre uh, of the agenda uh, towards a decarbonised future. So I would ask, in fact, I would challenge each and every one of you here today, not just to talk to your peers uh, about climate action and the challenges that we have, but also to the public uh, through your local media outlets. And I think it's important to acknowledge uh, here today uh, the efforts that are being made, uh, not just around what happened yesterday, what's happening here at the conference today, but over the weekend with Seafest. And this is very much about bringing what we're learning out into communities, out into the, uh, the public. And I think Seafest is, is an integral and important part uh, of this uh, whole programme. And I think, you know, I suppose as a scientist and um, Professor Brown uh, referenced Emer Colloran uh, earlier on, um, and, and Emer is someone that I would have dealt with in my uh, uh, academic career, education a long time ago, but um, I think it's important that we try and reach out to education, and I think, you know, as scientists we always look uh, at posters, 
uh, and having scientific posters for, for conferences. But I think the most important posters at this particular conference are the ones at the back of the room. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, they are, are important because we're reaching out to young people, the people that are going to have to deliver on the climate change agenda. And, and one in particular caught my eye, and that was in relation to Ocean Principle 3, uh, which was done by uh, Skull Reach uh, and the teacher Nicola Corcoran here in the city. Uh, the ocean is a major influence on weather and climate. Take note of that. I've taken a copy of it and um, I'm going to be in Kerry later this week and, uh, and I'll have a word with Danny Healy Ray on that particular issue. Um, but I think what is interesting is that, you know, down in the harbour, we're going to have uh, the research vessels and I'm going to have the opportunity to visit them uh, later on this morning. But there's also going to be an exhibition uh, in relation to sea science. Uh, and what I think is important and something that we all need uh, to try and do when we're setting up and putting huge resources into exhibitions like this is how do we ensure that we can continue that on beyond this weekend. Uh, and I think the organisers are to be complimented in actually taking the display from the harbour this weekend and bringing it into the Galway Museum. So it doesn't, isn't just available for the people that are here this weekend, but it's available for the many hundreds of thousands of people uh, that will visit Galway over the next weeks and months, some of them to lose a lot of money in, uh, later uh, this month, but maybe they, they might get some solace from, from visiting uh, the um, exhibition uh, in the museum. And I think that you're to be complimented in relation to that. But the fact is that the transition to a low carbon economy won't be delivered by one single event or a single technology. It's a process, improving energy efficiency, uh, diversification of our renewable energy uh, portfolio over the period uh, to 2030 uh, has to be and must uh, actually happen. Ocean energy uh, has a critical role to play in delivering on a low carbon economy over the next uh, 400 uh, months. Um, it can contribute to long-term greenhouse gas uh, emission reduction goals, reduce our dependence on imported fossil fuels, and enhance uh, security of our energy supply. Equally important, it presents significant potential to deliver green growth and, and jobs in our local economy. And I think, you know, Minister Creed uh, spoke about it earlier. There will be far uh, more speakers that will address the issue of the blue economy uh, here later on. But I think it's that interaction between the blue and the green economy is so important. Uh, and that's disregarding uh, the comments that my mother used to, to make growing up, that blue and green should never be seen. I think it is the future uh, is bringing both blue uh, and green together. There are challenges. There's absolutely no doubt uh, in relation to that. There are constraints uh, along the way, such as the rate of technology development. And wave energy is still at uh, the research development uh, and demonstration stage, uh, but tidal is much closer to commerciality. Onshore wind is still the most cost effective, uh, but offshore wind uh, is tightening at that margin uh, nearly on a daily basis. Of course, the availability of capital and other resources are critical, uh, and sometimes we need to juggle the conflicting priorities of affordability, sustainability and energy security. So it's crucial also at local level that there's active uh, engagement with communities on these future developments. And while the best ocean energy resource might be found in the less populated coastal areas, we need to be mindful of the spirit of the White Paper to ensure acceptance of the energy choices that we actually make. And I'm confident that we can find a way that delivers for both business and uh, citizens alike. The Offshore Renewable Energy Development Plan launched in 2014 is an important milestone in the development of our offshore energy sector. Ireland has the right building blocks to unlock the enormous potential uh, around us and create a sustainable indigenous industry. The offshore plan itself sets out a clear policy framework for the sustainable development of our energy sector, setting out the key principles, policy actions and enablers for delivery. Action across a range uh, of areas is required, and the plan provides a mechanism to which the action can be fully coordinated in areas of environmental monitoring and protection, research and development, uh, consenting procedures, infrastructure requirements, and enterprise development. 
Now, my department has adopted a cross-departmental collaborative approach in implementing that plan. And when I became uh, minister, the first meeting I had with my senior officials, I said that our department is very much a facilitating department that can help to drive change in other departments by bringing government and government agencies uh, together. And I think uh, the observatory that uh, Minister Creed thankfully launched uh, here and everything worked okay is a good example of taking technology and bringing it together with the traditional sectors here in Ireland, like the marine, to bring about something that is very innovative and very new. And I think, you know, the uh, government agencies, departments, uh, through the Offshore Renewable Energy Steering Group, are trying to coordinate that. They have detailed implementation plans uh, being set out now in three areas – job creation, infrastructure and environment. In relation to the Environment Working Group, considerable work has been undertaken in the data gap analysis for the sector, and an inventory now is available uh, of the relevant data, um, and I think that is important. Work is also developing on guidance documents, on information to be contained in environmental impact statements, uh, natural uh, impact statements, and environment monitoring requirements. Um, uh, and those documents now uh, are in draft form uh, and will be out for, for consultation in the next couple of weeks. These documents provide a valuable guidance both to developers, the industry and the state bodies uh, which have responsibility for the development of our sh offshore uh, resources. The Exchequer support in relation to research and development um, ha has increased significantly uh, under the, uh, the offshore plan. My own department in the period 2013 to 16 has increased its budget by 16.8 million euro uh, to a total of 26.3 million. Uh, and we hope that uh, in the future we can put more investment in that particular area. These fundings, uh, this funding supports Ireland's commitment to a world-class uh, infrastructure for testing, demonstration and the development uh, of ocean energy technologies. And the facilities we have at the Lear National Ocean Test Facility in Cork, uh, the quarter scale uh, test site here uh, over the road in Galway Bay, uh, just off the coast of Van Spidale, uh, and the full scale site uh, of the Atlantic Marine uh, Energy Test Site uh, off the coast of Mayo, I think is something very innovative, uh, something that we can promote and market internationally. And, and Peter spoke earlier on in relation to. Mayo football and Cork football, and I'm definitely not going to get involved in that particular uh, debate. But I was thinking coming up here this morning, talking about uh, these three fabulous facilities that we have now, because we can take uh, an idea right from its infancy now, right up to full scale, and assess the impact and the value of that. And I think we can bring and leverage foreign investment uh, into this country on foot of it. But how do you actually try and explain that uh, to the public? And it's, it's a bit like, you know, developing a footballer right from the cradle, right up uh, to senior inter-county football level, where they can be uh, the best in the country. And Minister Creed will know all about that, or Minister Kynaset will know all about that uh, next Sunday week uh, in, in Pierce uh, Stadium. Um, but I think it is uh, something very innovative where we've linked everything together along with the research facilities uh, in our universities. Uh, and in tandem with that, last year saw the signing of the foreshore lease uh, in Mayo on the test site uh, and the installation of the subsea observatory here uh, in Galway. Um, and that four kilometre cable, which thankfully worked uh, earlier on, supplies not just power to the site, but also unlimited data transfer from the site to re researchers, uh, not just here in Ireland, but internationally uh, in the innovative marine technology uh, area. My department's budget also supports uh, proto the Prototype Development Fund, uh, which is operated uh, through the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. And I'm glad uh, Jim Gannon took the, the long journey over from Moyne Cullen uh, this morning to be here with us. Um, and uh, Jim, of course, the Chief Executive of the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. And I think the, the supports and grant aid uh, that his organisation is providing uh, for ocean wave energy companies uh, is assisting pro projects to progress up the technology readiness chain uh, and move through the processes from Cork uh, to Galway uh, to Mayo. 
85 projects have been granted funding of a total of €13 million Euro since the fund commenced back in 2009. Last year, there was a record number of projects funded uh, under the, the scheme. Uh, 15 projects were awarded €4.3 million. Euro. Included in that was one called Sea Power Limited, who received over a million euro uh, to test their, their wave energy converter at quarter scale here uh, in Galway Bay. Another good example of that uh, and the use of the Galway Bay test site uh, has been the uh, OE uh, BOI wave energy device, which was developed by Ocean Energy from Cove in County Cork. It underwent rigorous testing in the wave tanks in Cork before coming up to the quarter scale uh, site here uh, in Galway Bay. It proved its ability to survive uh, the severe uh, storm conditions uh, of the Atlantic and the availability of the Galway site has allowed this particular Irish company to advance the, the device to the stage where it is now being readied uh, for full-scale deployment uh, through support uh, by uh, the SEAI. So it just shows you know, how we can progress innovative ideas right up uh, to full-scale test. Options for additional capital funding for the years from the period uh, to 2018 are also being discussed cross-departmentally. Subject to suitable technology emerging, this funding um, could facilitate innovative projects like uh, the ESB-led uh, West Wave demonstration project uh, planned off the, the coast of Clare. The Offshore Development Plan also identifies international co collaboration as a central policy, and Ireland has been actively exploring options in this regard not just with our near neighbours who share the Atlantic seaboard with us, but further afield such uh, as the United States uh, and Canada. We recognise that the pooling of resources, knowledge and expertise will help de-risk the sector and unlock its full uh, potential. And uh, just at the beginning of last month, I signed on behalf of the Irish Government an offshore renewable energy declaration with nine other uh, EU uh, countries in the North Seas area focusing on the development of cost-effective uh, offshore wind and wave renewable technology. And Ireland is committed to working not just with our European colleagues, but with the European Commission uh, through the uh, Ocean Energy Forum that was created by the Commission back in 2014. The forum provides a meeting place for industry, the public sector and NGOs to discuss how to overcome the barriers to the development of the ocean energy sector and to help on the path uh, to the full-scale commercialisation uh, of uh, projects. It has developed uh, a, a strategic roadmap and over the uh, coming years, uh, over the coming months, we'll be coming out with key recommendations uh, facing, uh, regarding the challenges that the industry is facing. Last October, as uh, Minister Creed said uh, earlier, uh, Commissioner Vella who is the Commissioner for Fisheries uh, and Maritime Affairs, uh, was here in Dublin with some of his uh, senior officials at a high-level meeting on the Ocean Energy Forum. And that took place alongside uh, the Ocean Energy Europe uh, event. So a lot is happening in this area, and it's about trying to bring together all of the strands, communities, researchers, uh, business, uh, and not just at a national level, but very much at a European and international level. And I think these three facilities in Cork, Galway and Mayo can really put uh, Ireland on the map. So in conclusion, the Offshore Renewable Energy Development Plan, I think, focuses the minds on the development of our ocean energy sector. Ireland is very much open for business and is actively committed to harnessing our abundant wave, tidal and offshore wind energy resources in an environmentally sustainable manner, supported by a coherent policy, planning and regulatory framework, Ireland is dedicated to developing an indigenous ocean energy industry that has a real opportunity to deliver the future economic and societal benefits that the citizens of Ireland demand. As an island nation, we must seize this opportunity presented to us and we must continue to work in 2016 and beyond to reach our goals over the next 400 months uh, to have a decarbonised society and that we build on the momentum that has been gained uh, in the progress that we've made to date. Thank you very much.